Our next guests are former Major League Baseball All-Stars and teammates. You can see their work as analysts on the MLB Network on shows including Intentional Talk and MLB Tonight. Please welcome to the show Sean Casey and Ryan Dempster. <laughs> Good to have you guys here. Sean, you've been on a bunch of times. First time for you, Ryan. I'm so happy to have you. Oh, man, thank you so much. I'm also very happy the baseball season is starting. Yes. Very emotional day for me yesterday. 20-year anniversary of the 2004 Boston Red Sox, one of the mm -hmm. most special teams, certainly for me. And uh, the great uh, Tim Wakefield passed away uh, this yeah. year. His wife passed away. It was a beautiful uh, ceremony for them. Did you guys, uh, for guys who played for the Red Sox, uh, yeah. was that a cool day for you to watch? I mean, I think... Even as a baseball fan, I think that's one of the greatest teams of all time. The characters on that team and everything. And I think, you know, them having the big ceremony with Wake's daughter throwing out the first pitch to Tech. And, it, you know, for baseball guys like you, brother, um, you know, it was, it was a big day. You, uh, you were both Red Sox. Yeah. Did you enjoy your time with the Red Sox? Oh, my God, did I? Ah. Yeah, it was amazing. I played one year. It feels like I played 10. <laughs> you know, one year, 2013, well, you the winning the World Series. Yeah. Thank you. You know, and it was So great. that's your ring. <laughs> that's yeah. what I will say. It's very tasteful. It's, uh, you can barely notice it. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the amazing thing about this, so true story about this, I get this ring, right? And we, my wife and I come to New York City right after I'd retired. I went and got the ring. And we went to Nobu uh, right here in Manhattan. And we didn't have a reservation. And I was like, we got up there and we're like, maybe we get a seat at the bar or maybe they'll have an opening because that happens a lot there, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and so, so we're sitting there and I'm like, and I'm watching all these people go up and they're like, it's going to be an hour, it's going to be an hour and a half, you know? And my wife's like, we should just go somewhere else. And I'm like, just, just, just hold on, just hold on a sec. So true story, I had my ring on. I was like, excuse me, is there any chance, like, there's just two of us? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know... <laughs> Not trying to like, is there any chance we get a table, you know? And I watch her face. She's just going like this, right? She's, and she goes, I'll be right back. And then she came back five minutes later. She goes, we can get you right in. Wow. <laughs> Open table app. Right here. You don't go. need it. Oh, okay. Now, that's very nice. Yes. Especially for a Red Sox World Series ring in New York. New York. The fact yeah. that it worked, right? Well, if I walk around in the Bronx, I go like that, and I just <laughs> yeah. standard ring. You know? standard. Yeah. Now, uh, well, speaking of the Bronx, you uh, were, uh, for the second half of last season, yeah. batting coach for the Yankees. Yes. How was your time uh, as a hitting coach? Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think, too, you know, when you're, uh, when you're the hitting coach or you're a coach in the big leagues, then you're in the best player in the league is also your best person in the clubhouse, and Aaron Judge yeah. makes it a lot easier. So it, it was incredible. Aaron Boone's like one of my dear friends, played six years with him in Cincinnati, and uh, just reconnecting with those guys. But get, being able to be with, you know, G. Stanton and, and, and Judgey and, and Volpe and those guys all, all year uh, for the second half was incredible. So I have to ask, right, so you're a hitting coach, and you mentioned three guys who are obviously very good at hitting. Yeah. Like, they've been doing it for a long time. What at the major league level do you even <laughs> say to one of those guys? <laughs> I know. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> you see Aaron Judge hitting balls like 500 feet. I was like, I never did that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think there's something to be said about for a guy that's done it or that's a coach that there's so many ups and downs in a 162-game season that, like, I think sometimes just knowing that, like, anything you've ever done, as bad as you think you are, I've been worse. You know what I mean? I think, and so... So you just walk around as an example of how much worse it can get. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you guys think it's bad now? You should see some of the things I did. <laughs> now, you guys were teammates, uh, Reds, 0203. Reds. Yeah. How, was, uh, how was it having Sean as a teammate? Uh, he was awesome, man. Like, he really was. Like, he had the nickname The Mayor, right? Like, that's yeah. his nickname because he really was. He was so personable with everybody. I mean, so friendly. Like, I remember one time... Should I tell this? Yeah, well, yeah. I don't even know what you're yeah. saying. I don't know. It, you just, he just was a, like, I, I got traded over to the Cincinnati Reds in, in, in 2002, and, you know, a week to the team, we went to St. Louis, and, and, and Case calls me up in the hotel. We were staying at the beautiful Hyatt oh, Hotel there. Oh, Two-story hotel. It was gorgeous. I like as you're finally remembering the story. <laughs> And like you I think I know this and is it's going. too late to be like, no. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, I was like, we can't tell us on Seth Myers, dude. We know we can, and we're going to. And, and we're sitting there, and Case goes, uh, calls my hotel room phone, and, and you know, now you're in that moment where you got to try and be a good teammate. So he says, can you come down to my room? I need to talk to you about something. And I go walk down the hall, I knock on the door. He says, hey man, thanks a lot, dude. Hey, listen, I, I you know, I, my wife's coming in. I haven't had a chance to do any manscaping. Can you shave my back for me? <laughs> <laughs> and I had to decide what kind of teammate I wanted to be. And here we are, all these years later, huh, pal? Look 22 at that. years later, we're yes, telling the world. Yes, you got that right, absolutely. <laughs>
Well, you have to. I just whenever, like how whenever quick... you look in the clubhouse, you see who the hairy guys are too. I look. Yeah. Dem took his shirt off. I was yeah. like, I could call Dem. <laughs> <laughs> You were, I like that every time somebody got traded to the team, you're like, maybe this is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> you were always hoping they would be like for a Harry player. Harry Mack Club, yes. <laughs> uh, you just threw out a first pitch. Oh, yeah. So uh, home oh. opener for the Reds or no? Home opener for home the Reds. Home opener. And yeah. again, you're a beloved uh, Reds vet. Yep. And yep. so how, did you have any stress about it? What? Are you serious? <laughs> Major stress. You know what I mean? It's different when you're playing every day in the big leagues and you're, and you're used to those crowds, it's one thing. But you're 16 years out of the game and then they're like, hey, can you come throw the first pitch out of the opening day? In Cincinnati, that's like a, you know, it's a national holiday too. Yeah. So I, the day before I went, to, took my son Andrew. I'm like, hey, dude, listen, you got to get down. We're going to the local high school. I'm ripping some balls in there from the mound, you know. You know, I'm thinking of George Bush just put it right on the money to Jeter back in the day. I'm like, I got to do that. Then I'm thinking of like, 50 Cent who threw it into the Mets dugout. Yeah. I'm like, okay, don't want to be that. Somewhere in between George Bush and 50 Cent, I'll be yeah. good. So I get out there, uh, you know, with 45,000 people cheering, and, and all of a sudden, man, it's just your brain goes into this incredible place right. of, like, this dungeon of, like, if you throw it away, you know what I mean? It, it, you're, you're going down. And you did it, because, again, former player, you got to do it from the mound. I had to do it from the mound. Yeah. I, I was going to do it from the grass, and everyone was like, you got to go to the mound. So I was like, all right, go to the mound. Yeah. I get up there, and, like, Dempy's a pitcher, so it's like, bam, I was a hitter, right? So I'm, this is a different view, yeah. 45. And said, I get up there, I take a rip, and it ball starts cutting like Mariano Rivera. Just, <laughs> shit, I'm like, and, and Brent Suter, Brent Suter, who was a uh, lefty, 6'6", six, six lefty reliever, almost has to dive, to, but he makes the play. It's like this. And I, like, literally, like, getting the biggest hug ever. I was like, dude, you saved my life, dude. I didn't, need yeah. a, I, didn't, I didn't need a video out there forever. Like, you know, here's 50 Cent, the mayor of Cincinnati yeah. years ago, and Sean Casey. Well, this is, we are going to show a highlight uh, video, but this is uh, uh, Brett's highlight. This is not yours. <laughs> Let's take a look at the save from the catcher. I mean, man, skinnier oh team. God, thank you. Skinnier team. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I feel like we talked about this once. I think I met you. You were Cubs, like, 03, 04. Yep. And I remember at the time, uh, being out with you, uh, I forget how we ended up at the same bar, but you had a great Harry Carey impression there. Yeah. And you had grown up. It wasn't even because of the Cubs. Like, people forget Harry Carey was the Cubs announcer. Yeah. Cubs used to be on WGN. It was America's, weirdly America's team. Yeah. And so, uh, but you took it, uh, you started doing Harry Carey. Where are you doing it here? Is that an actual Cub game? That's doing the seventh inning stretch right seventh there. Seventh inning stretch. Yeah. I, I got full makeup in. I've done it a few times, uh, you know, different different uh, places. Like, for example, I uh, got a chance to roast uh, George Wendt. George Wendt, Norm from Cheers. Yes. Local Chicago guy. And, and I method acted for that. I went down like this, and then I shaved my beard off between times of rehearsal and that, and I went full makeup, and I sh nobody knew who I was. And so did the people there think you were had lost your mind? That yeah. That you were a person who just thought Bob Odenkirk's wife did, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. She's Naomi just, Odenkirk, who's yeah. a famous, uh, yeah, manager. Manager. She's like, what, what's going on here? What's with this? You know, are, you, <laughs> are you struggling for money? Like, what's happening, you know? <laughs> Um, but she was really great, and, and so then I went out there, and I was nervous, right? Like, that's a big thing, and, like, Jason, uh, his nephew, Jason... Jason Sudeikis, Sudeikis, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's the roast master, and you had, like, people like, you know, Tim Karaszynski and Betty Thomas and Julius Sweeney and all these really famous people out there roasting him, and I'm an ex-baseball player, and I didn't know what to do, and so... And I, I just came out hot out of the gate. Yeah. You know, like, here we go. Like, Jason introduced me. I come out, and I'm like, hey, thank you so much, Jason. It's great to be here. Hey, is it just me, or does Sudeikis sounds like a sexually transmitted <laughs> disease? <laughs> uh, I just went, you know? And I was like, hey, there's Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> yeah, Bob's got a hit show called Better Call Saul. Which is ironic, because in the 80s, when we wanted hookers or cocaine, we say, well, you better call Bob. <laughs> you know, I worked with Sudeikis for years, and it does sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> First time it occurred to me. Um, you also, um, uh, you grew up in Canada. Yep. And so when you made it to the bigs, uh, not a ton of Canadian players, no. born, Canadian-born players. Not many at all. Like, honestly, in the big leagues at the time, I was in the big leagues early on, there was like six, seven major league baseball players. And it's people, so then the guys you met, the American ball players, like, it was really foreign to them that you were from Canada. Oh, yeah. Like, Canada to them was, like, uh, you have to take some sort of, like, raft and a plane and, like, <laughs> you're, like, all, like, they'd be like, wow, you're from Canada. <laughs> wow. What's that like playing baseball in Canada? <laughs> 
And I'd be like, well, you know, I mean, it's pretty normal. I mean, you just have to stop the game every once in a while, like the herd of polar bears go running through. You know, and they'd be like, really? I'm like, no, we're from like two hours north of Seattle. You know, not really. Were you? I, were you so, in there? I, I got an incredible, he says this, I got a incredible Canadian story. Now, okay. we're in a, I'm not going to mention the guy's name, but everyone used to ask me, you know, I played first base, so they, you know, okay, tell me some great stories from first base. You know, what, what, what do you guys talk about? And then some days, like, hey, great weather, way to swing, and how's your parents doing, all that stuff. And this one time, this one guy was a big home run hitter, right? So he's, he hits first home run, second home run, next one, double, double, a big pull hitter, too. So next one is du a double in the gap. So he's three for three. Comes up. I've never seen this guy hit the ball the other way in my entire life, right? <laughs> Bam, he hits a rocket down the left field line. Beautiful piece of hitting. Last, last. Uh, it turns out, turns out Dempy was pitching the game. We just yeah. found this out. Yeah. Right Backstage. It's even incredible. He's right? telling the whole yeah, story. He's telling the story. He's like, I was pitching that game. I'm like, man, you got hammered that game. <laughs> so, so he hits, a, he hits a rocket down the line, Seth. And I'm like, I'm like, so I'm, I'm, I can't wait to talk to him. I, I go over, I, you know, he's on first base. And I go, bro, I've never seen uh, you hit like this, man. A, a couple home runs, but I've never seen you go to left in your whole life. You know, it's incredible. I go, four for four. He goes, he goes, you know what, Case? He goes, and this is, you could say this back in 2000, 2002, I think, because he goes, I'm eight beers deep and a pack of smokes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> Guy's crushing a beer and inning and a couple of heaters and he's just breaking them. I'm like, maybe I should start doing that. <laughs> I wrote him a note after the game. I said, this is no way to treat a fellow Canadian on U.S. soil. Thank you. See, it was fun before steroids. Yeah, guys. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Couple beers and some Marlboro Reds. Everything's That's good. It, yeah, there you go. Sports. What a delight to have you guys here. It's yeah. always great talking ball with you. Yeah. Sean Casey, Ryan Dempster. Everybody can see Sean and Ryan on the MLB Network show intentional talk on MLB tonight. And Sean's podcast, The Mayor's Office, is available.